I wrote that solo over the chords to John Mayer's Gravity a few months ago now, and when I say I wrote it, I do mean that I sat down and I properly composed it. None of what you heard there was improvised. Every note that I played was you know, exactly the way that I was hearing it in my head. It was very deliberate with the way that I played every note there. Now, one of the reasons that I love writing solos as opposed to improvising them, I mean, I love improvisation as well, but the reason I love writing solos and practicing that specifically is I like the feeling of having created something that sounds memorable. When you think about songs with classic guitar solos like Hotel California, Sweet Child of Mine, or even Gravity, the solos in those songs are not just killing time, they're not just filling musical space, they are integral parts of those songs and the songs just wouldn't sound right without them because those solos are so memorable. Now, what is it that makes something memorable? It's repetition. Repetition and development of musical ideas is, that's, that's what I think the key is to creating a memorable guitar solo. So I'm now gonna play you guys the original solo to John Mayer's Gravity. This is the Continuum album recording. And after I've played it, we're gonna break it down and analyze what makes this solo so memorable. solo is just eight bars long but there's three very memorable passages in it that make you want to almost like sing along with the solo when you hear it. So John opens with this. That first phrase opens with the notes A and B. He's sliding up from A into the note B and he goes up. The highest he goes is he goes up to the note D and he ends like so. Next, he plays this. So what he's done there is he's repeated that movement from A to B on the same string, but he's developed that musical idea by going higher the second time that he plays it. So now he goes up to the note E before he finishes the phrase. So he's played two very similar phrases there, but he's just ended on different notes each time that he's played it. That's the first of the three memorable moments in this solo, and it's because he's taking this simple phrase that just starts with the notes A going up to B. He's taking that phrase and ending it differently. He's ending on different notes each time that he plays it. The first time he goes up to D, the second time he goes even higher up to the note E. So that's something that you can try the next time you sit down to practice writing a solo. Open with a very simple phrase and develop that phrase by repeating it and changing the note or notes that you end on. So here's another example of me doing exactly that. This is the phrase that I'm going to play twice. But each time I'm ending that phrase on a different note. The first time I go up to the note G. Then the second time I go even higher to the note A and actually bend up. The second memorable moment in the original Gravity solo is this. So John is developing a phrase there that's based around just these four notes. 
but he's not developing it in the same way that he did for the first phrase that we just looked at, where he played the same phrase twice but just ended on different notes. That's not what's happening here. In this instance, he is playing the exact same notes in the same order twice, but it's just that he's changing the rhythms used to play those notes the second time around. That's the first time, and then he does this. Just slightly different rhythms to develop a phrase that contains exactly the same notes in the same order. So rather than changing the notes of a basic musical phrase to develop a solo, you could instead play the same notes in the same order, but just change the rhythm the second time that you play it. So here's an example of me doing that. I played exactly the same notes in the same order twice there, but it's just the second time I changed the rhythms used to play those notes. The first time it went like this. The second time I played those same notes, but with a bit more urgency. And just FYI, these uh, simple musical phrases that I'm repeating and developing are often referred to as motifs. And that's something that I've talked about on the channel many times before now, but only in an improvisational context, um, as opposed to you know compositional, which is the topic of this video. The third and final memorable moment in John Mayer's original Gravity solo is this. Here, John is taking the rhythm and technique used to play a simple phrase that only contains three notes, C, B, and G, and he's applying both of them to a different set of three notes on the B string, E, D, and B. The technique is a bend. The first time you hear it, it's a semitone bend from B to C on the high E string. The second time you hear it, it's a whole step bend from D to E on the B string. So this time, he's developed the motif by taking the same rhythm and technique used to play a phrase and he's just applying it to a different set of notes. I actually did something similar to that in the solo that you heard me play at the start of the video, so here's the part that I'm talking about. taking the same technique and rhythmic idea and just moving it down the G major scale a couple of times. <laughs> to recap on what we've gone over in this video, the next time that you're practicing writing solos at home, here are three things that you can try making a conscious effort to do. One would be taking a very simple musical phrase and developing it by playing it a couple of times but changing the note that you end on, the notes or notes that you choose to end on. Two, you can play a phrase twice with the exact same notes in the same order but develop the rhythm each time that you play it. And three would be take a technique used to play a particular phrase and apply that same technique to a different set of notes. You can also use the same rhythms used to play the original phrase. If you guys wanna learn and study the Gravity solo that I played in the intro, as well as grab all of the tab files and the Gravity solo backing track, you can find all of that in the extras section at bulletproofguitarplayer.com. You can get started with a subscription plan on a monthly basis, which costs 12 US dollars per month, or you can opt for an annual plan, which is 120 US dollars per month, that's discounted down from 144, giving you two months of site access for free. Both plans give you the same amount of access, which is everything that you see on the site. That includes both parts one and two of Bulletproof Guitar Player, my original online guitar courses, which are designed to take intermediate guitar players to an advanced level of guitar playing. And you also get access to all of the bonus content that I make for my free YouTube lessons like this one. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Like and subscribe if you are new, and I hope to see you in the next one.